Welcome everybody to basketball's greatest show. Four teams playing out the American dream. And in Kansas City, which has hosted more collegiate championship games than any other city. In our opener, it is that long shot out of the Midwest region, the Kansas Jayhawks against the champions of the East, the Duke Blue Devils. And then in the second game, Arizona, the team which dominated the West, playing Oklahoma, a team with two speeds, fast and fast. This is one of the most anticipated days in American sports. Fifteen thousand eight hundred and ninety two ticket buying customers. They could have well sold three times that many tickets. In fact yesterday outside of the arena it's illegal to scout tickets here but an entrepreneur was advertising a t-shirt for seven hundred dollars. He would throw in a free ticket. He was arrested anyway even though the police chief here allowed that it was a very very good t-shirt. Now in our first game it's a rematch of a national semifinal two years ago down in Dallas. Who would have thought that Kansas and Duke could retool this quickly in the lingering memories. Number one Danny Manning out of the game on fouls only four points the lowest of his career and then in the late going to that a freshman off the Duke bench. Number thirty five Danny Ferry would reach down pick up a loose ball and put in a critical basket that would propel Duke to the victory over Kansas seventy one to sixty seven. And now Manning and Ferry will do battle again. And what a pleasure it is for me to again be working alongside my partner Billy Packer. And Billy, in that second game today, I guess the heavyweights, the two number one seeds in their region. Arizona, Oklahoma, and Brent, I think I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it's Houston going against Louisville. Remember what a game that was. I think these two teams had the potential to put on the same kind of clash that we had in that day, which was probably the finest semifinal game in the history of the NCAA tournament. All right, Billy, a doubleheader that basketball fans everywhere have looked forward to. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. And our first game today, matching Kansas against Duke. The winner to advance to the championship Monday night. Millie, we've talked about the two dominating players. Danny Ferry of Duke and Danny Manning of Kansas. Both of these players obviously are among the best in the whole country. Danny Manning is a guy that ha is gifted in every phase of the game. May have as soft a shot for a big man as any big man that's been in the college game at any time, Brent. Just a great shooter. Now in Danny Ferry's case, he's up and down as a shooter, but he's a great, great passer. There you see him making that half hook. Both fellas have potential to carry their teams. What does Danny Manning mean to this team here in Kansas this year? Well, he has been phenomenal in the NCAA tournament. You're going to see right here what he's done. 27 points a ball game, seven great field goal shooting percentage, 36% of the whole team's scoring in, in the regard to the tournament. It reminds me of somebody, Brent, and it had to go back to 1979. The great Larry Bird, incomparable Larry Bird. Look at those stats. You can see very similar to what Danny Manning is doing in this tournament. One other thing, Billy, about Danny, the way we have seen him mature as an individual, he stayed in school, and he knows when crunch time comes, he's the main man. I think when it's time for us to have a basket, I want the ball. And I think my teammates realize that, because when I get the ball, if I can't score, I'm going to create something, and I'm going to open something up for my teammates, and I think they all recognize that. When the ball goes into Manning, a lot of people say, watch him go to work because he's, he's almost poetry in motion. So you watch him, and if he misses, which is, you know, usually doesn't happen, those guys, Newton or Piper, are putting it in. So we've got to concentrate on those other guys also. The chemistry of their team is so good. You know, when they need a bucket, they go to Ferry, and, you know, stepping up for their team and, and meeting a challenge. Really going to execute offensively, take the fast break when it's there. I think when we do that, we're really successful. And when we can put some emotion and some, you know, some fire in our eyes with that, we're a really tough team to beat. Billy, what are some of the fine points that you would instruct the fans to watch today? 
Well, one of the first things, of course, is going to be Danny Manning's minutes. He's got to stay in the game for Kansas, particularly stay out of foul trouble in the first half. Second thing is Duke's depth. They have a great team in terms of depth coming off the bench. Quality players that play quality minutes. Strickland's streak. He's been on a great streak as a shooter. He has to continue that for Duke. And, of course, probably the best of all for Kansas, the unknown Jayhawk. They have had a great deal with guys coming off the bench. Scooter Berry just last week. Who's going to be the guy today? I don't know. But if somebody shows up, they're in good shape. Well, Billy, we're about to meet the starting lineup for Kansas, and we'll be back to introduce the Duke players and Kansas. It wouldn't be a Final Four without the familiar voice of Frank Fallon. Let's go to him now to introduce the starting lineup. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to Pepper Arena in Kansas City for today's national semifinal between the Kansas Jayhawks and the Duke Blue Devils. Now, let's meet the starting lineups. For Kansas, at a forward, a 6'4 junior from Washington, D.C., number 21, Milt Newton. For Duke, at forward, a 6'6 six, six senior from Sterling, Virginia, number 55, Billy King. For Kansas at forward, a 6'8 senior from Lawrence, Kansas, number 24, Chris Piper. For Duke at forward, a 6'10 junior from Bowie, Maryland, number 35, Danny Berry. For Kansas at center, a 6'10 senior from Lawrence, Kansas, number 25, Danny Manning. For Duke at center, a 6'5 sophomore from Fayetteville, North Carolina, number 21, Robert Rickey. For Kansas at guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Tulsa, Oklahoma, number 14, Kevin Pritchard. For Duke at guard, a 6'3 junior from Mercer Island, Washington, number 14, Quinn Snyder. For Kansas at guard, a 6'5 sophomore from Charleston, Illinois, number 33, Jeff Geldner. And for Duke at guard, a 6'5 senior from Mount Airy, North Carolina, number 31, Kevin Strickland. And introducing the head coaches, for Kansas in his fifth season, Larry Brown. And for Duke in his eighth season, Mike Krzyzewski. Six weeks ago, these two teams played in Lawrence, Kansas. In overtime, Duke won it 74 to 70. Back with the rematch in just a moment. In reaching Kansas City, the Kansas Jayhawks were able to avoid Purdue, Pittsburgh, and North Carolina State in the Midwest region. As for Duke, their road through the East Regional was a little more difficult. They had to beat the top seed, Temple, by 10 points to get to the Final Four. The referee today, and he's a good one, Booker Turner from Los Angeles, California. He will work alongside the two umpires, Jim Burr and Limbo. Kansas in their road uniforms, Duke the higher-seeded team. They will wear the home whites, but the crowd very pro-Kansas. The university down in Lawrence is only about 45 minutes away from the Kemper. Danny Manning's first shot partially blocked, and Duke controls the ball. Tough man to man, and it looks like it's going to be Bricky on Ferry early on. A tough matchup for Bricky because Ferry's got about five inches on him, Brent. Watch and see the next time down the floor if we don't see Danny Manning moving down inside on Bricky using that height advantage. Ricky, 21, did not practice much yesterday. We'll develop that story for you. Here's their point man, Quinn Snyder, underneath the basket. Ferry misses his first shot, and Pritchard, the point man for Larry Brown, brings it across the timeline quickly for Kansas. Nice job by Piper on Ferry that time. And there's Manning going down inside on Ricky. So the turnover. See Danny going down inside. He realized Bricky's on him, so instead of going out into the perimeter area, he's sitting right down inside looking for the pass. He didn't have a good angle on that one. Snyder with pressure from Pritchard. Both tough man-to-man -to -man defensive teams here. 
And the game's first foul is called, and it goes against Geldner, number 33 of the Jayhawks. Obviously, Geldner is playing Strickland to shoot the jumper. Strickland wisely went by him with the dribble. I mentioned Bricky's problem yesterday. He had an allergic reaction to a penicillin shot. So he was quite ill, unable to hold food, but he reported before the game that he slept quite well and should be able to play today. That is Piper stepping into the lane, making the interception, forcing the turnover for the Jayhawks. Manning's trying to get Ricky on his hip. Newton, the role player, number 21, introduced from Washington, D.C., but he actually grew up in the Virgin Islands, played for their national team. In the Great Olympic cross. Games. And a pass to Piper and the defense inside. Strickland was there along with Brickie, and the first foul goes against Duke. And Brent, you see how fundamentally sound Danny Manning is when he made that changeover right off the pass. Not many big people can do that. As a matter of fact, not many guards can make that play. So that first personal was against King. One apiece here in the foul category, and already Coach Krzyzewski is up in front of that Duke bench. He knows he's in a somewhat hostile environment. It was unusual yesterday in that when Duke came out for their shoot around to be introduced, they were booed. And Brennan was interesting in that shoot around. There were more people in here that actually attended the national championship in Kansas City in 1964. Picking up man to man, full court, a lot of pressure, really extending the defense out. Strickland moving it to King. Ferry bottled up, so he comes out to seek the ball. Tries to get Bricky and Manning with a good defensive play for the Jayhawks. I think Duke figures with the defense out that far, they can get something down low. And Newton hits the first three point. Against Billy King. Something that Macon couldn't do all last weekend. Manning the Kansas defense now forcing the part of Duke Geldner with the hands of Pritchard with a jump pass in low off the glass Danny Manning is there and it's a quick seven point burst here by the Jayhawks in the first game that these two teams played this year Kansas got a big lead on Duke early on also Mike Krzyzewski's going down inside because he wants to pick up some foul trouble on the interior. But so far, Kansas has really overplayed that passing lane. Scooter Berry checks in. He is the first sub off Larry Brown's bench. He played a sensational game last Sunday against Kansas State in that regional final. Strickland. And Duke still not on the board as Pritchard runs it down now. It's three on two. Off the fake. Great defensive play there by King. Ferry. Short. Short. Not close. Long rebound run down by Pritchard. And Brett, when you're down like this early in the game, you're wanting to get a better shot than that. Manning wanted it, and Ferry picks up his first personal foul. Billy Danny Manning is bigger than anyone Duke has out on the floor right now. That's a very tough matchup for Duke. See, they started off with Bricky on Manning. Great position play by Manning there to hold Ferry off. But Bricky is a little small for him, and Mike Krzyzewski does not want to use Danny Ferry on him early because he doesn't want to pick up the foul problems. Smith into the ball game now, which is a little better matchup size-wise, and of course, he's coming off that broken hand. Arthroscopic surgery, not expected to play. He was out shooting six hours after the surgery. Manning's shot is short. Snyder, the point man for the Blue Devils. And into that lane was Manning. But he gets it into Henderson's hands, who had checked into the lineup. Now for Duke. Time for Duke to get in their offense. Kansas overplaying every pass. Opportunity to set some screens. You notice Kansas doesn't let the passer get an open area at all. Ferry still off. And it's Manning who can put it down, trying to get the ball into Barry's hands. Back to Newton. Tapped by Manning. Mike Krzyzewski going to the timeout. They're getting away from him. An early nine-point explosion by Kansas.
four teams here only 25 and 11. Larry Brown lost six Jayhawks since the start of the season. He has used 12 different starting lineups yet he has been able to retool and bring this team here playing in front of a very partisan crowd in the final four 16 20 to go and he has broken ahead of Duke nine to nothing. Danny Ferry 0 for 3 at the start of the game. Good switch that time by Manning. Henderson. Pritchard rebounds. Duke can't buy a bucket early. Both teams really extended the defense out. I think Manning can get a shot on the inside if Duke's going to play that far out. Now it is Smith eyeing Manning, and Newton's three is there. That's his second three point shot. And Brent, Kansas had Duke down in the first game 23 to 8. Duke can't get a basket. And the foul, Richard reaching in on Snyder. And, and Mike Krzyzewski will go back to his bench. And he will return Strickland to the lineup. And he will try Ala Abdel Nabi for the first time. They will check in. Now, Abdel Nabi gives him a little more height underneath. He goes at 6'10. He's a sophomore from Bloomfield, New Jersey. It is obvious against Manny, who is playing with enormous intensity. And please remember that he fouled out the last time these teams met in the final four in Dallas, scored but four points. He has come back to be the player of the year, and as Billy Packer told you before the game, he reminds one all of Larry Bird and what he did. Another turnover forced, and it was Manning with a hand on it. Newton goes for two. Just defensive intensity has taken this game right away from Duke. Brent, they easy shot inside. No rebound. Abdel Nabi tries the hook, and he finally puts Duke on the scoreboard. We have played almost five minutes. He hit that at 15-11, and so it is 14-2, Kansas. A lot of time, obviously, in this ball game, and you get a lead like this, and the momentum Kansas got going. They got, I would think at this point, get the ball down to Danny Manning and make Duke work against him the rest of the way. Now Duke forces the turnover, and they can put together field goals here for the first time. Here's Quinn Snyder with his three off the iron, and out comes Newton for Kansas. Oh, how about Manning. that moving? <laughs> Sensational play by Danny Manning, breaking out of the pack. He realized that Newton had the rebound. He took off. Duke had bad floor balance. And then Strickland complicates everything by fouling on this play. You might as well let, let a player like Manning put it in there. No chance to block that dunk. Just heads up play by Danny Manning. Proven he can do about everything. Running on the break and filling that lane. Manning, who grew up in Greensboro, North Carolina, moved to Lawrence, Kansas when he was a senior. And his father, Ed Manning, took an assistance job alongside Larry Brown, and the two have stayed side by side for four years. Danny Manning says it's been bittersweet having his father, Ed Manning, alongside of him like that. He said there are times when he's been too critical, but when the times are good, it's awfully nice having Dad alongside of you. And he sits down for a couple of words from his coach. I think a nice move here by Larry Brown. He's got the lead. He he's got an opportunity to rest Danny Manning and keep him out of foul trouble, which is one of the keys in this. Jumping out is Piper, and he fouls Ferry. That is three team fouls on Kansas, three already on Duke. Quickly checks back into the game. <laughs> that wasn't the strategy I thought was involved in that substitution at all. I thought he let Danny rest for a couple of minutes. Mike Krzyzewski has beaten Larry Brown three straight times. The only three times the schools have met. It's going to be that type tougher the way things are going here. Danny Manning, he knows it was his fault. You see him patting himself on the chest. He said, that was my fault. Committed himself by going up in the air. Mike Krzyzewski really upset with his ball club in terms of the way they're trying to pass the ball, but give a lot of credit to this Kansas defense. They've extended the perimeter to the point that Duke just doesn't have any passing lane. King, Henderson, Strickland, Abdul Nabi, and Ferry try to get it going right now for Krzyzewski. Newton out on King. 
Ferry, but there was a whistle. And the foul will go against Newton. King off a fake, had his pocket picked on the inside. Boy, Piper doing a great job defensively. He hadn't scored yet, but boy, he is doing everything inside. Ferry comes flashing through the lane and draws the foul. It's a tough start here for Coach K. Two personals already on Billy King. Now Kansas will go to the bench and Clinton Normore, football player, six foot junior out of Wichita, Kansas, checks in and he will give Newton a break. The audience responding to Newton's performance here in the early minutes of this semifinal. And he got him started with those two threes. Scooter Berry, who had the great game against K-State coming off. We said who would be these Jayhawks off the bench. It looks like Scooter's off a pretty good start himself. I can just see his father, Rick Berry, who's watching on television, shaking his head somewhat in disgust at a missed free throw. Rick was one of the best, and I'm sure that he was extremely proud of how Scooter played. Scooter's mother, Pam Connolly, is in the crowd here at Kansas City this afternoon. This is some defensive performance, Brent, to hold a club like Duke down to two points. Almost eight minutes of action. Billy, let me emphasize that. 13 Duke possessions and six turnovers already here in the early going. The ambush at Kansas City. Good back screen. Terry. On the scoreboard here at the 13-19 mark. Now, if Kansas is going to continue to pressure that much on every pass, Duke is going to be able to go ahead and use that back screen. Kansas holding opponents under 40% in the NCAA tournament field goal line. The three by Pritchard, run down by Ferry. King was talking to Normore that time. Perhaps we can pick that up on defense. Billy King doing a lot of talking out there on the floor now. Tries to get it in, and he does the Ferry with that turnaround back-to-back -back field goals now. Ferry on a little bit of a roll. That was a tough shot because he turned against his body to put up that jumper. Bumping away on Normal. Good lob. Deep. Manning couldn't jam it in, but Barry's got possession. He did a great job just saving that, Brent. Now he comes up with that soft shooting touch you mentioned. There's Danny coming out of high school, made the Olympic trials. He's sure to be a major factor in our Olympic team. In addition to being player of the year this year. History will make this comeback by Duke very tough. Since they've already done it once against Kansas, the Jayhawks will be reminded all game long not to ease up. Scooter Ferry with a great rebound right over Ferry. They can afford to wait on Manning now and not go ahead and force things. Strickland got a hand on it. Ferry's got it back. Emotional exhaustion on the Duke part right now. Manning again on the inside, unstoppable. Duke used a zone defense several times down in Lawrence, Kansas, and Shashevsky will have to think about it apparently before this game is too far gone. But Brent, when you get down this far, you don't want to go into the zone. Got to keep some pressure on, try to turn the ball over a little bit. Billy now, turn around and King can't get it to fall. So Ferry picks up Manning on the inside this time. Piper had Abdanabi off the ground. He can make the drive on him, sure can. And Henderson due to return. Brent, as I said, the score in the last game at one point was 23 to 8. It's now 24 to 6. Great crowd reaction here. Jump pass to Abdelnabi, who's fouled. And the field goal would not drop. Been that kind of an afternoon for the Duke Blue Devils here in the Kemper Arena in Kansas City. This is a city which has hosted some monumental championship games through the years. You can go back to 1955 when Bill Russell and the San Francisco Dons captured their first of back-to-back -back national championships. That game was played right here in Kansas City. Snyder again sits down and on the floor for Krzyzewski it'll be Strickland, Henderson, Abdelnabi, 
Kubek in for the first time, and Ferry. And Brett, when you talk about Final Fours, UCLA in 64, 1-1, one, one, right against this Duke team with Gail Goodrich leading the way. And Newton has returned for the Jayhawks. Good block out. A block out was by Keith Harris, who also is off the bench for the first time here today. Jeff Geldner back on the floor. So now Coach Brown able to rotate some of his subs into the game. And there's a whistle. And the foul goes against Danny Ferry. That's his second personal here in the first half. And the 15 foul, 10-22 to go, 24 to 7. Danny's father, Bob Ferry, the general manager of the Washington Bullets. And not Duke fans don't look very happy. No, at this but that was a great play by Danny. Not only is he a, he a great individual player in terms of his physical skills, but the thinking process there to step out when he realized his teammate was in trouble and then going by because he knows that he can beat Danny Ferry on the dribble. Now he goes inside realizing Bricky's on him. Harris comes the baseline. Duke rebounding. Ricky, who's back on the floor. Then a tremendous defensive performance by the Jayhawks here in the early going. Good hand check by Gelder. And inside the ferry, nothing will fall. Now you really have to be careful with Manning on the fast break. Tipped away beautifully by Strickland. He comes back three on one. But that's twice that Danny Manning has not converted on a fast break situation, trying to make too big a play. In Strickland comes over from the weak side to help out defensively. Touched by Duke. So the ball go back across the timeline. Break on the floor here in Kansas City. Nine minutes to go in the first half. Standing proud in the hard, great Midwest, Kansas City, Missouri. And here their Jayhawks have exploded, holding the Blue Devils scoreless for the first five minutes. And they have out-rebounded Duke 12 to 5. Now, Billy, what must Duke do here? to get back in this game. Well, the first thing I think they should remind themselves that they were basically down this far at Kansas. What they have not done is gotten into their offense at all, and the reason for that is the great Kansas defense, particularly on the outside. So they've got to get back in an offensive structure, and I think set some on the backside. Kubek's three-point shot is on the money. The three will help get you back, too, won't it? If you're Kansas, I think you want to get the ball to Danny Manning every time down the floor and really put pressure on Duke's defense. Ricky is fronting him. Manning roaming along the back. You can watch him there. There's number 21 jumping out in front. That is Ricky. Manning going back deep to the baseline. He towers over Ricky. Great pass on the inside, but Barry could not. Good cut without the ball by Scooter Barron. The reason for that is anytime Manning's got the ball, you have two men on him. Harris returning. And sitting down is Chris Piper. That hurts the Kansas defense a little bit because he has been excellent down in low. Strickland on the run was left free as he got into the heart of the key. And that's where they missed Piper, because he would have been down in there for a potential block. Getting back to within 10. Oh, good jump that time by Strickland. Looking for the big fella, and Ricky with a slick defensive move, knocking that ball out of bounds. Brent, there's a case, if you're going to hit Danny Manning, hit him when he's solid. There's Ferry coming back and Piper coming back, but hit him when he's standing still against the smaller man, not when he's moving, because as he's moving, it gives Ricky a chance to use his quickness. 
This is the best run by the Blue Devils so far. 8-0 over the last three minutes as they scratch and claw, trying to get back in the semifinal. Richard over to Manning, Piper in low. Sealed Manning, normally that works the other way. That time Piper and Manning did a great job sealing Ferry inside. Notice they're not giving Strickland anything to shoot from the perimeter. He traveled. That is the seventh Duke turnover here. Those expressions on the faces of Brown, Krzyzewski, reveal how this game has unfolded here in the first half. Interesting, between the two of them, Brent, they're 12 and 4 in the NCAA and 17 and 6. Some coaching records. Same play. When you have a guy like Manning who can seal you on the inside, and if you play him in the front, he goes for the lob. If you play behind, he steps out for the jumper. Tricky. And there's an advantage of having a man fairy size to be able to see over the defense and just fire it inside. Back to a 10-point game, and now Barry, that's the spot where he burned Kansas State. Sunday. Ferry. And with a slick steal, Henderson gives Duke a second chance. Tough break for Kansas because they had an easy rebound there. Lob, Manning had a hand on it again. Knocked out of bounds by Kansas. Gilner returning for the Jayhawks. And Abdel Nabi will try it again as Shevsky continues to rotate nine players in this game. Brent, with Pritchett out of the game, Duke may have some uh, opportunity to do some pressure on Kansas. He's been the primary ball handler. Jump pass to Abdel Nabi. Foul on Piper is his second. Abdel Nabi's got to be able to convert that inside. When you're down that low, you just have to go up strong and make those shots fall. That's the second one he's missed like that. But he has been open on the inside. That's because in that particular case, Piper and Manning are trying to double up wherever Ferry is. As Harris replaces Piper. Sam free throw shooter way off on that one. And you've got to make these free throws to get your press going. Duke is two of four at the free throw line. Oh, Scooter Berry going to be the primary ball handler. Kansas has turned it over three of their last six possessions. Newton down on the inside, and the ball is knocked out of bounds. Normore returning for Kansas. And Barry sits. Now Larry Brown really has to look for a ball handler. It's always got me. Yeah, that's true. his way for that ball. Oh, great shot. He just wanted it more than Snyder did. He proved in the Pan Am games he's a scorer. Leading scorer for the Virgin Islands. And Brent Newton's only getting to play 22 minutes a game. His second leading scorer on his team getting 11. King drops it off on the inside. Nice pass to Strickland that time, who has scored six points here in the first half. Football player in the final four, huh? 
Larry was short-handed, so he had to get a couple of football players to come out just to allow him to scrimmage during the week. And Newton. He's eaten up Billy King. He is five of seven, and that Billy could be the unknown Jayhawk here this afternoon. how far Kansas has extended Duke's offense. They're out 30 feet to get it started. Snyder bangs his first field goal. Larry Brown trying to get some rest for Pritchett out here. A risky Duke, gamble. And Duke trying to end the first half on a positive note, if it can. Using a little clock, smart move by Kansas. And he's staying out the perimeter, puts it down, gets inside out to Nave and hits a runner. When he's got the big guys, Brent, he goes outside. When he has the small guys, he goes inside, can put it on the floor. Very gifted player. It's hard to find anybody in the college game who can stop him one on one. Perry coming up, he was fouled, and that's two on Gilbert. And that's seven, they are over the limit. So they'll be shooting one and one. Five team fouls against Duke, so they still have one to give here at the 341 mark. Kansas leading Duke 34 to 21. Brett, what's interesting, in the regional finals, every team that eventually won and got to the final four was behind at halftime, but none more than seven. So Duke has three minutes here to get themselves back in a working position, but Larry Brown has been able to rest Pritchett, which should give him that good ball handler for the remaining part of this half. If you just joined us, it was an early explosion by Coach Brown's Jayhawk team here. And the defense triggered it. Their first six points coming off turnovers. As you mentioned, this young man, the ACC's Player of the Year. J.R. Reed. And back again next year. So we've got a television timeout here at the 341 mark. It's 34 to 23, Kansas over Duke. Billy, we have been raving about the Kansas defense. Well, it has been sensational in the NCAA tournament. Defense is your constant. Brendan, you can see what Kansas has done throughout the course of this tournament. Just sensational, holding teams way below their average. Not quite as good today, but I think what's interesting, although defense is the constant, how about the variable? Exactly. Larry Brown today has shot 64%. Jayhawks hitting their last five, and they've held Duke to 47%. Henderson with a hand on the ball, knocking it away, and Barry returns for Kansas. I wonder if Mike Krzyzewski is thinking Maybe to show a little zone before the half ends, just to throw Kansas off and give them something to think about. Billy, coming into this game, the experts said that Duke was the deeper team, but here in the first half, Larry Brown has rotated as many players as Mike Krzyzewski, both he, using nine. He has, I think, a real testimony to his outstanding coaching and ability to work with kids, because they are not that talented. There's Harris, knocked away by Brickey, gets it back. Probably shouldn't have shot that shot. Manning attempts to save it, but he stepped out of bounds. The ball goes over to the Blue Devils. Well, Harris has to think about shot selection a little bit. With this kind of lead and this kind of time, you want to make sure Danny Manning gets a chance to touch the ball. Strickland sealed up on the inside, maintains possession. Good hand check by Pritchard. Ferry trying to trade off the dribble. And they tie it up. But they maintain possession. Now, players have to realize how referees are refereeing a game. So far, defensively, in the man to man, the refs are allowing a little hand checking on the perimeter. Ricky has it knocked free and out of bounds. Not good defense, but has to be frustrating when a man gets that ball with a slap from behind because Brickey had a clear path to the basket. Curry in the corner, loses 
his control. And again, great Kansas defense. Duke just doesn't have any free passing lanes, and they're a little frustrated. That was their opportunity to get it down below 10. A lot for Manning. That's the play. 15 points for Manning here in the first half. Really impressed with Pritchard's defense out front. Turnover, not called. Bricky. And his ball. Manning gets it into Newton's hands. Inside of two minutes here in the first half. Strickland. And Bricky fouled by Manning. And what a difference from two years ago. That is the first personal foul called on Danny Manning in this game. Well, that's what Larry Brown told us yesterday, Brent. He wanted to make sure in the first half Danny Manning had no more than one foul, even if it meant that he wouldn't be quite as intense on defense as normally. He has been intense and has stayed out of foul trouble. And I would credit that to the great perimeter defense by the Kansas guards, because nobody's been able to get an easy pass inside. by Kansas. Wait on the big guy. There he is. It is, and he jumped the pass off beautifully that time. And coming in is Newton, who has scored 14 points for the Jayhawks in the first half. Duke is all thumbs on that one. Nine Duke turnovers here in the first half. Well drilled club. Now they're going to let Danny Manling handle it. Get either a shot or a good pass. Kubek is 0 for 2 in catches. Snyder runs it down in the corner. Inside to Bricky, a slick pass by Ferry, who was one of the better passing big men in the game. Larry Brown wants one shot here. Good move on his part. I don't know if I've seen a better defensive first half by a club in a long time. Ferry switches over to guard Manning. Down to 24. Newton foul. That's the sixth foul. Against Duke, as several subs again check into the game. Abdul Nabi returning. Kubek sits down, and so does Bricky. Cook in the ball game for the first time. Well, it's been the Manning and Newton show so far. They have scored 29 out of Kansas, 38 points. Henderson also off Coach K's bench. And again, Larry Brown. Substituting right along with Shashevsky, returning Gelner and Mike Maddox. He's used ten men, and it goes over with 14 seconds left in the first half. But that was a big turnover for Kansas because they didn't need to try to get the ball down inside at the, that occasion. You've got yourself a, a, a nice 13-point lead, working on 15. Brown takes Manning out so that he doesn't pick up that cheap foul with 14 seconds. Billy, really, how good a three-point shooting team is Duke? Well, Henderson's a good three-point shooter. Kubek can shoot it from out there, so can Snyder. Good drive. Snyder hits the layup. And the first half comes to an end. As far as the Jayhawks are concerned, well, as Dorothy would say, it's great to be going home. They explode to a 24 to 6 lead. They were up by as many as 18. They go to the locker room leading by 11. The end of the first half and our coverage of the NCAA basketball championship on CBS continues after this message and a word from your local station. 
Well, it's true that Duke trailed in the first half of that earlier meeting in Lawrence, 23 to 8. But by the time halftime rolled around in that game, they were down by only one, 28 to 27. You've talked a lot about the unknown Jayhawk. No question about who that is now. Well, Milton Newton had a great first half, and, and he's been an explosive scorer. We talked about his uh, Pan Am games explosions, but 14 points in the first half, I think that really surprised Duke. Billy James Brown had a check inside that Duke locker room, and let's find out what they were talking about. All right, Brent, and you said it exactly. Danny Manning was the known commodity. Milton Newton was the unknown. That's the guy that the coaching staff from Duke feels they've got to stop in the second half. Additionally, as poorly as Duke played in the first half and as well as Kansas played, they're only down by 11. They take encouragement with that. Back to you, Brent. James, another thing that has troubled Duke here, Billy, is the fact that they've turned the ball over. They really have turned the ball over, and I think the reason for that, Brent, is not only the fact that they got down a little bit on themselves, but the great Kansas perimeter defense. They just didn't open up any pass. Lanes, testimony to their ball club. Now, in the field goal percentage, Kansas hit 55% and Duke 46. This is the most that Duke has trailed any game this year. They were down by nine against Arizona when they lost at Tucson earlier this year. Here we start the second half, 38 27. On the floor, Geldner with the ball starts again for Kansas, along with Manning, Pritchard, Piper, and of course, Newton. And Duke comes back down with Snyder over to Berkey, who traveled, trying to get the ball into Strickland's hands. Ferry is out there along with King. And that's a decision that Strickland would have been smart to go ahead and keep that ball, not put it in Berkey's hands on the wing. He wants to be a finisher, not a guy that has to make the pass. Richard out on top for the Jayhawks. Piper pops to the ball. They wanted Manning and King, who had dropped down low to help out defensively. Shows you some smarts on King's part because he was tied up with Newton and realized the ball was going into Manning and slid over there. Sloppy start to the second half so far. Duke looking for its rhythm. Very short on the three. And it was Strickland who pulled it away from Geldner. Into the hands of Snyder now with Pritchard all over it. And the first foul goes against Kansas here, and that's Pritchard's second. There's the hand checking by Pritchard all the way across the lane on Snyder. Now that that is something that Duke has to adjust to. When you feel those guys with their hands on you when you got that ball, you've got to slap them away and draw that to the attention of a referee. Quickly, Barry replaces Gilden here in the second half. I think the key thing for Duke is to try to get into some offensive flow in the second in the second half. You know they took Kansas took them out of their offense completely in the first half. If if Mike Krzyzewski has to do anything, he's got to get his team back into a half-court offensive pattern in their passing game. The big difference between this Duke team and the one two years ago that played in Dallas, the lack of senior leadership. This basically is a very young Duke team, with the exception of Strickland and King. Richard gets all the way inside on a penetrating move, his first field goal of the afternoon. But he had a sensational first half without scoring. Did not turn the ball over, had five rebounds, just ran the game beautifully. Very short jump shot out there, yanked away by Piper. Richard seeing the court beautifully. Manning wanted the jump pass, wound up in the hands of Ferry. That's 10 Kansas turnovers here in this game. King wants it back in Ferry's hands. Off the dribble. Ferry's not shooting well, and the reason for that, Piper's doing a great job on him defensively. Newton won't stay, and Ferry yanks away the rebound. Three on two, and again, that Kansas defense. Nope. Off King's leg, great steal from behind. Mike better be careful. He's going to swallow his gum over there on the Good side, piece. trying to get back in this. Good piece of officiating there. Both teams a little sluggish here to start this second half. They can't get the ball back into the offensive flow the way they had it, at least not in Kansas' case, because they played very well offensively in the first half.
Danny Ferry is only two of ten in this game, though. He's missed his last five. Brent, I haven't seen anybody take Billy King to the cleaners quite like this. Sean Elliott got 31 against him, but you know what he is as far as an All-American caliber player. Newton is just taking it right to King. Snyder jammed a finger. Henderson will replace Snyder. Abdel Nabi also into the game for Duke. Sure, Coach K is saying to Snyder, you don't need the ball down on the baseline with guys like Piper and Manning shutting you off. King into the paint. Don't fall. Newton couldn't get the handle on it. Blocked by Manning. Lead to Pritchard. No more is open on the other side. Pritchard keeps it. And Strickland comes out for Duke. Just no flow by Duke in his game. Offensive foul against King. Brett, I have not seen this club get in a fast break situation when the wrong man handles the ball so often on the break. They have not converted at all even when they had the numbers. Kansas ought to go to Danny Manning this time down the floor. Take a little time off the clock, make sure the big guy touches it. Richard, the open man is Piper. Henderson to Ferry, and again Manning blocks the shot. Piper gets it into Pritchard's hands. Two more, his first of the second half, and 17 for the game. And Shusevsky uses a timeout. Well, there's quite a coaching connection in this game. Duke's Mike Shusevsky played for Bob Knight when Knight was the head coach at West Point. Then he served as an assistant coach under night at Indiana and Bob there in the blue sweater and the Duke button watching intently as his former player and assistant coach has fallen behind 44 to 28 with 16 16 to go as Kansas has played just an outstanding game here this afternoon especially on defense Piper moving those feet just cutting everything off for Ferry. Now it's Strickland's three and, uh, and here comes Normore now into the hands of Pritchard back and they go. Richard not there, but Manny trying to clean up. He does. That's 19 points for the big fella. Brent, you see that in a Final Four and in, a, in the NCAA tournament, as they get down to the pressure games, teams tend to crack. And you look for where those cracks are. That was the first one I've seen from Duke, taking a very bad shot. We're starting to panic with his score this high right now. And it's going to cost them. Ferry gets it back to Strickland. King hounding Normore, who's handling the ball here as Pritchard has moved to the off guard. He has played both of those spots this season. Coach Brown, Manny, offensive foul, his second. Good fake by Abdelnabi, because Manning had him set up for almost a clear out one on one move. His father watching intently. You know, Ed Manning and Bob Ferry, Danny's father, were teammates. Back with the Baltimore Bullets and when they were toddlers, the two youngsters used to play in the locker room. And of course, uh, Ed Manning played for Larry Brown when he was with the Carolina Cougars. So there's great, a long connection here. Great connection with the family. Danny Manning and Danny Ferry have been friends since they were knee high to a wastebasket. They used to stuff the ball inside the Bullets locker room. Great fake by Snyder. Basket is good. Score the field goal, says Limbo. Perry trying to get position. Good follow through by Quinn Snyder on that shot. And the third personal against Ferry. 
Well, Mike Krzyzewski cannot be thinking about personal fouls right now. He's going to have to leave him on the floor, even with three. Trailing 46 to 32. now has been the key to Kansas' great play the second half of the season since he moved to the point guard. Oh, what a call. I thought that Manning was waiting on him, and again, Duke not making good decisions on the break. Here you see Bricky committed way on. There's Danny Manning waiting on him. I thought that was a charge all the way. Three fouls on Manning at the 14:37 mark. Now watch this. Danny Manning's waiting. I think he was there. And again, all Bricky had to do was to move out to the side, get the ball back to the center, and they had a three-on-one break easy. Duke at the free throw line is only five of ten here for Shashevsky. back to help them bring the ball up the court. Very wanting more pressure applied. And Larry Brown will use a timeout. It's 46-33, Kansas leading Duke by 13 with 14.28 to go. Well, here with Kansas up by 13, there's a lot of heat on the two point guards. Quinn Snyder struggling today with one assist and three turnovers. The surprise in this game has been Kevin Pritchard. Now, he was born in Bloomington, Indiana. He was a blue chip prospect out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. His parents book entertainment acts now, including the Oak Ridge Boys, and he's making some pretty music here for the Kansas Jayhawks this afternoon. This is Newton. To the line. What was so great about that is Billy King tried to go rushing out at him to take away that jump shot. And Newton, who has been sensational today, just come. Now watch this. You'll see Billy King go right out at him, try to stop the jumper. He makes the great move, gets King out of position, goes up, gets hit on the arm, and still has the follow through to score. Brent, this guy had 32 against Brazil in the Pan Am games. And you remember Brazil, Pan Am games, the United States? Not bad, huh? He redshirted one year at Kansas and is coming on strong today. This best game he's played, although he had 19 in the second half against Oklahoma. Ferry glides the baseline. Manning careful there not to pick up another foul. He just knows he wants to stay out on the court right now. Manning off the dribble. Good shot. Three on two. Bricky saves it, and then it's knocked out of bounds. Brent, I, I bet you if you go back and look at this uh, game, you'd see how few times Duke has been able to convert on that fast break. At the conclusion of this tournament game, Billy, you and I will select the Chevrolet players of the game from each team as Quinn Snyder misses on the field goal. Newton off with a rebound, and there's Pritchard coming down off the court. Lob inside to Manning. Misfiring again, wound up in the hands of Bricky. Danny Manning's getting a little tired right now. May need a blow because he doesn't miss those kind of shots often. Ricky thought Manning was right behind him. Missed on the fake and Ferry hit it on the follow-up. I think Larry Brown's going to have to give Manning a rest. Whether he does it by slowing the game down a little bit or whether he takes him out. Manning's tired right now. Still 12.50 to go here in the second half. Duke gets it on the turnover. Schneider. Pressure's out of control. Bricky taps up. Offensive rebound again for the Blue Devils. That was Kubek hustling for it. Strickland bluffs the three. And here's Bricky off the dribble. And again, a block inside. Two of them are here. Blue Blue Wilson in the second. We'll right. see him in the next game against Oklahoma. Now 
what Kansas cannot afford to do here is start looking at that clock. There's a lot of time to play. Duke's making a big run on him. Abdelnabi returning here at the Kemper Arena in Kansas City with Billy Packer. I'm Brent Musburger. 12.23 to go. Duke fell behind, giving up the first 14 points in the game. And now it is down to 10. 49 39, but it has been all uphill this afternoon in this national semifinal for the Blue Devils. But they are on a 10 3 run right now over the last three minutes. Open offense here, looking for some backdoor cuts. The Duke fans taking heart in the fact that Danny Manning is not on the floor right now. Knocked away from Pritchard, and it'll go over to the Blue Devils. That's turnover number 14 by the Jayhawks. Larry Brown's got a thought here, Brent. When you get down under 10, that's kind of like a magical number to get down into single digits. Manning comes right back in the game, only sat down for about 30 seconds. Kind of like how long you want your starting pitcher to stay in that game. Strickland, who has been handled here this afternoon. Kubek explodes, and there is Manning. He comes up over him because Manning cannot afford to pick up his fourth personal foul. They get inside the Magic 10. Got to go to Manning this time. Take a little time off the clock. Let the big guy handle it. There he is. Nobby. Off his foot. That's the first foul on Abdel Nabi, who came over to the corner. And Brent, if you're Danny Manning, you've got to be careful not to try to take the whole game over at this point. Put the, keep the pressure on Duke. Quebec watching Harris. The rotation to Newman, the three, and Newton misses. Rebound by Duke. It was Kubek wrapping it up. <laughs> Offensive foul on Snyder. There's that defensive technique in football. Third leading tackler on that Kansas team and did a great job moving those feet. Very returning. Piper also back in for Kansas. On the floor for the Jayhawks right now. Newton and Pritchard along with Piper, Berry, and Manning. And for Duke it is Bricky, Henderson, Ferry, Kubek, and Schneider. Piper trying to get it to Manning, finally does, and that's soft. Three. Second one for the freshman today, and Duke has not been able to get the three-point shot off. 10-20 to go. Duke back closes to within seven. Ferry can't afford to foul that far out. Duke's making the passing lanes tough. Ricky fronts Manning. Richard off the dribble has it knocked away. Kansas ball. 17 left on the shot clock. King returns for Krzyzewski. And Snyder sits down. It has been a struggle for the Duke point guard here this afternoon. He also jammed a finger. Piper takes the inbounds pass. The lob for Manning. Couldn't handle it into the hands of Ricky. Henderson into King's hands. Kubek who's hit those two threes out high. Ferry's trying to post Piper up, get the lob over his head. Henderson with the jump shot from the baseline. Hit by Kansas. Ferry was in rebounding with the big fellas that time for Larry Brown. Good job by Bricky to keep that ball alive on the offensive boards. Best surge by Duke all afternoon. Kubek's three.
short this time. Berry with an offensive rebound, fouled by Berry. Brett, now maybe Kansas can get their second win. We know they don't have a deep bench. You pointed out early in the game, six players are off this squad since the beginning of the year. Makes it tough on Larry Brown, and right now, it's a war of attrition. Snyder returning for Duke, and Normore will check in for Kansas. This little delay helps Kansas a little bit. Danny Manning being able to get his breath. So here so far, Duke's run is over the last five minutes. Manning and Newton have carried the offensive load for the Jayhawks. Billy King still looking for his first basket and playing now with four personal fouls, trying to contain Newton. Gets the ball on the inbounds pass. There's his first field goal. Nice pass by Ferry. Almost had to be perfect. Richard saves it. Panning into the deep corner. Ricky would love to keep him there. Normore spins in the key. Knocked away. Another turnover. Outlet. Here comes King Racing Piper. Offensive rebound by Strickland and a foul. No basket. Now, even though Duke will go to the line again, they don't convert on the fast break. Oh. Now, Duke should try to get on that foul line, Brent, right away so that they don't allow Kansas to rest. Force that referee to put the ball in play. Deep pass to Bricky. Now it's Strickland going baseline. Partially blocked. No foul call. Piper winds up with it for Kansas. And now Danny Manning gives it up to Pritchard. 8.45 to go. 51-46. Kansas over Duke. Manning roaming all over the floor. Here's Piper. Ferry coming out with him. Kansas works the shot clock inside of 15 seconds. Man misses. Ferry wraps it up. Smart play by Duke to slow things down, make sure they get the good shot. Frost to Strickland, the three. Big moment for Duke, and it wouldn't stay down. Now the Jayhawks are back. Crowd coming to its feet here in the Kemper. Newton behind his back. Piper. Game of inches, aren't they, Brent? You rim out on the three-pointer, and then you get the ball on the almost a steal, not quite. Wanted Ferry, knocked away by Piper, out of bounds. Ferry fouled and got away with one. Piper, again, who statistically hasn't had a big game, has been sensational with his floor play. Abdel Nabi checking in for Krzyzewski. Seven minutes and 28 seconds to go as Harris returns for Coach Brown. 53-46, Kansas leading Duke. They have led the entire game. Piper six. Very fine Snyder who gets inside on the penetration. Manning can't get control. Ferry jumps in and the possession arrow pointing in favor of Duke University going to get the ball down on the inside. That was a good rebound by Danny Ferry and a good reach in by Quinn Snyder. He's very good at that after a man gets the rebound against him. Okay. Since both teams wearing down a little bit, Brent, they're having a hard time with their shooting touch in this stretch. Paying close attention to Kubek, who's hit the two threes here this half. Off the fake. Kubek misfiring. Run down by Ferry. 
And he misses. Push off. And there was a push underneath. And that's why Abdel Nabi was wide open. Well, Brent, with seven minutes to go, if you're Duke University, you've made the good run here. You're down seven. They're too anxious to try to cut it down quickly. Ferry uh, 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 took a bad seven. shot. Kubek tried to force a shot that wasn't there. It's really helping Kansas. Butcher brings it up. Snyder standing at the timeline. Knocked away by Abdel Nabi. Manning goes for the loose ball. And it is tied up again in its Kansas possession. Remember in that first Duke-Kansas game, that ball that went out of bounds, Danny Manning made the great dive for the ball. And Manning's just trying to use up a little time. Get a breath. Fred, do you notice the change in the crowd? When the game started out, it seemed like it was a Kansas crowd. As this game has moved along, it seems like the Duke people have gotten a little bit more boisterous. King returning. I think the Arizona and Oklahoma fans might have started changing for Duke <laughs> because they want a close game. A little action before. Oklahoma and Arizona moves center stage. Deep to Newton on the inbound. Back out to Pritchard. Penetrates. There were two Jayhawks. Piper runs it down loose. And here is Manny. Ricky tracking him. Murray shipping the pass, and the turnover is the 17th of the game against the Jayhawks. What you see the Jayhawks doing right now is they're looking so much to get the ball to Manning and Milton that they have not had an opportunity uh, to Newton. They haven't had an opportunity to get anybody else in the offense. They need that third score right now. It may have to be Pritchard. Now Newton will sit down as Harris comes into the game. And also off that Kansas bench for the first time today is Lincoln Minor, the 6'3 junior out of Houston. And Barry, after shipping that ball out of bounds, will sit down on the Kansas bench. So it's Henderson coming up now for the Blue Devils. They trail at 53 46, 6.20 to go. Oh, offensive foul. And how about Piper? Brent, what is it? Has he scored today? <laughs> Maybe two points? He has scored eight, Billy. He eight? scored oh, six well, in the first that's half. That's a quiet eight, then, because I, I haven't seen a guy play a better defensive game. Of course, that's what he's known for in the Big Eight. Speaking of the Big Eight, what a year this conference has had. Two teams in the Final Four. Great season all the way around. Miner comes out to the top. Pritchard ships it in now to Manning on that turnaround. That's 23 points for All-American Danny Manning. That may be his best shot, that little turnaround jumper from that area. Back to nine. Piper leaning in, going to the glass that time. He has scored 14 for the game. He's hit six of 17 here this afternoon. Richard's lob winds up and you know who Manning to the glass. Oh. Coming off with Ferry. Here now it's three on two. Henderson wraps it to Kubek. Offensive foul. Well, Brent, I that all about even it up because I thought we had a charge before, and under no way that was an offensive foul. Great pass. See, Pritchett's not even close to being in position. He actually is the one that made the contact. That ought to even it up. Coach K is still yelling out at Booker about that charge call. Scoreboard stays at 55-48 with 5.15 to go. Snyder's rested. He's been on the bench. What a fabulous job by Pritchett today. The stamina he showed to handle that ball so much. Manning pops out high. That's Piper bringing it along with Ferry. King trapped him, but Ferry runs down the loose ball. Manning, Ricky watching him, goes to the floor, and they turn it over on the pass, and here's Strickland. Duke trailing by five. 
at the 430 mark. They were once down by 18 in the first half of this game. Surprise Snyder's not picking Pritchett up full court, making him give up the ball some. Another steal by Duke. Here's Ferry. Brown's got to go timeout here, Brent. His club is exhausted. I would imagine when they get up over half court, he'll call it. Duke pressuring them meanwhile. He's not using one. It surprises me. And inside of four they go. The closest we've been since the early moments of the game. Down to three. He's trying to set up Manning one on one down low. No help down there. Here's Pritchard in low. Oh! And he hits it. Oh, what a shot! Now it's Snyder wanted it, and Manning stepped in and intercepted the pass. Now you notice what Mike Krzyzewski put Billy King on Pritchett. Change here. Kansas goes to an open offense. Nobody in the low post now looking for those back screens. And back door cuts. Harry looking for something on the inside. Nothing there. So he'll come back out now to Pritchard. Harris from the baseline gets inside. Great play by Strickland on the block. Duke's ball. This has turned out to be a magnificent game as Duke claws its way back into this national semifinal. Kansas still ahead by five. Well, Kevin Pritchard came up with the field goal of the game so far. The 6-3 sophomore appeared to be in deep trouble, Billy. Well, he really was. Uh, Brent, this is, first of all, not his shot in the low post. Great defense by Strickland. You notice how he shifted the ball off to shoot it off his shoulder. He had it fall in. They're down. They're down right now five. Think of his two and that three-pointer by Strickland. A little timeout problem here for Krzyzewski. He is down to one. Kansas with three. No fouls to give on either side here, and Duke would get possession in case the ball is tied up. Now, one of the things that has turned around this half are the turnovers. Kansas has turned it over this half 11 times, and Duke only seven. Duke, for the game, turned it over 15 times already. A fresh Newton back in the game. Grant, that's going to help Kansas in that open offense. He can score down low. Looking for a three here. Snyder with the two. No. Booker signals it is a two. He was close to the line. They move Snyder back on Pritchett. That's because Newton came back in the game. Good cut. Pritchard's open. Manning follows. 25 for Manning. Got to be thinking three-point play here. Strickland trying to get open. Behind the back to Bricky. And there's a blocking foul underneath. That's his third personal foul. Brent, I'm surprised that Duke is going inside now. You'd like to set up the three-point play, try to get it back down to two. Billy, don't you think it's early? No, I don't think I don't think you're talking about desperation three. I'm talking about penetration, back out, hit the three. You've got Strickland, Snyder can shoot it out there. Then yeah. rebound strong. But the only threes hit here by Duke in this game have both been scored by the freshman Kubek. They're two of seven out there in this game. Well, I can assure you that in the next game, there will be more than two for seven of three points <laughs> when you put Oklahoma on his floor. They'll, they'll shoot seven in the first minute and a half. The other in Kansas is two of five from the threes. Ricky couldn't get it to roll, and Newton. All over that rebound. Now the Jayhawks come down up by four at 153. See the open offense. They're cutting behind Duke. And the overplay, you got to be careful here. Manning coming way out and down away from the ball. Danny Ferry commits his fourth personal foul. Piper, a 68% free throw shooter. How often do you 
often do we see it in these tournament games? It goes down to those free throws. You can just put the nails in the coffin or let a game slip away from you. Danny trying to explain that he was giving ground there to Piper, who steps up to the free throw line with his eight points. He's been perfect in his two free throws so far. And he runs it to three. Young man's had a great game. Interesting thing, he went to Lawrence, Kansas High School. His team won the state crown before Danny Manning got there. Danny Manning's senior year, they did not win it. Four of four and a big game for Piper. It goes back to a six-point lead now inside of 140. Good job by Barry, not giving the three. There's Snyder's three. Again, they miss. Kansas drops the ball out of bounds as two players go for the rebound that time. Mike Krzyzewski calls for his team to run the 1-4 offense. Now, he knows with two possessions, he's got to go ahead and get those threes up. Danny Manning, did you see that blood on his, I believe it was his right leg? I can assure you he doesn't feel a thing. Not giving Brookie anything on the inside. Oh, nice but it's Ferry. No foul. Manning yanked it away. Ferry again tries to draw the foul and could not as Barry gives it to Newton. Nope. No basket. And there's a case where Scooter Barry made a mental mistake. When you've got that kind of a break, what you're trying to do now is use clock. With a minute and 12 to go and a six-point lead, bring the ball back out unless you have an absolute layup. A good physical play, but not a good mental play. Shooting one and one as Snyder confers with Krzyzewski. And still to come here this evening, we'll have the second game. A couple of number one seeds will be squaring off. Arizona, which stormed out of the West, will take on the Sooners of Oklahoma, the team which dominated everyone in the Southeast Regional of this NCAA tournament. King bangs a free throw at the front end of the one and one, a big moment for Duke. Little King, a notoriously poor free throw shooter. As Danny Ferry kidded him yesterday, the three and a half year slump is over. But he missed that one. And Newton puts it into Barry's hands, and Snyder goes over and quickly commits the foul. Well, the son of one of the great free throw shooters in the history of the game has a chance to seal some things here. You want to put Newton on the foul line if you're Duke. He's the poorest free throw shooter, only at 56%. Is that the end for Billy King? No. King with four, sitting out right now, and Ferry with four. What I think we're seeing Mike Krzyzewski doing here is that little defensive substitution. He brings Kubek back in, so he's got three three-point shooters out there. Coming down toward the one-minute mark. Snyder gets it back. Strickland looking for the three. Not there. Rebound by Kansas. And now they're closing in on an appointment to play for the championship. Here's Newton. Foul by Snyder as he came underneath him and committed his third. He looks like a professor, but Larry Brown can scream to the world. You know, it's incredible, Grant, not only in the college game, but in the NBA as, and in the ABA as a coach. He never had a team that didn't make it to the playoffs. And here, three times in the 80s in the Final Four, the chance to take two teams to the championship game. There's the man to follow. But what a game he's had, huh? Billy has 20 points with seven rebounds. Kubek trying to find the three. Ferry fires up the three. Runs it down here. Time running out on the Blue Devils. He comes back again. Wouldn't stay down. Yanked away by Manning. Wanted Newton again. Pritchard goes after the long with Brookie. And 
Duke comes back. Ferris, three, missing again. And Kansas is going to play for the championship. Quickly comes down now for the Blue Devils. Schneider into the hands of Bricky, rejected by Manning, who has had a monster of an afternoon. 25 points, 10 rebounds, seven block shots now, and four steals. The player of the year has simply done it all here this afternoon. And how proud is this man over on the Kansas bench? Brent, you know, there was an awful lot of criticism of Larry Brown when he gave the job to Ed Manning. The only reason Ed's getting the job is because of Danny. But Ed Manning was a great leader when he was with the Carolina Cougars, did a great job at North Carolina A&T, and it was very unfair criticism of Ed, who's done a tremendous job as an assistant. And this man right here, Johnny Orr, told me something this morning. He said the two greatest players he ever coached against were Danny Manning and Magic Johnson. Some compliment. And the big fella leaves to a standing ovation. He has not yet played his last college game. Ferry puts in a three-point shot. Just two ticks of the clock left. You know, back in 1957, Kansas came to the championship game right here in Kansas City, and it wound up being an all-time classic. North Carolina needed three overtimes to get past Wilt Chamberlain and Kansas. Now the Jayhawks will come back to a title game only 45 minutes away from their campus. Well, another great big man, Clyde Lavella, who will be going into the Hall of Fame this year. He led his club to a national championship right here in the city. And we'll come back for the Kansas celebration when we continue in a moment. Well, Kansas bolted to a 14-point lead in this game. And they have never been headed, although the Blue Devils made a great rally here in the second half. They were unable to get the job done. The Kansas Jayhawks will play for a national championship. in just a moment. Kansas will play for the national championship on Monday night against the winner of the Arizona-Oklahoma game, which will tip in about 30 minutes. As the Jayhawks today held Duke to the lowest point total of the season, 59 points for the Blue Devils, also the lowest field goal percentage of the season for Duke, as Kansas held them to only 34% from the floor. Let's talk about now the Chevy MVPs from this first game of the national semifinals. Danny Manning, 25 points, 10 rebounds, and six blocks, and Danny Ferry for the Duke Blue Devils. So now we know that Cinderella was not a woman, 
but a Manning. And Kansas is going on to Monday night. Let's go back down to courtside. Brent Musburger and Billy All Patrick. right, Jim, thank you very much. Danny Manning's the hero, but it was the unknown Jayhawk I want to hear from. Milt, fabulous game you turned in today in support of him. Tell me how this team was able to pull together. You lost so many players earlier. Well, I think at the, in the, the part of the season when we were really struggling, we saw that we had to play hard. Coaches tell us if we wanted to succeed, and that's what we started doing, and we started winning. Danny, it's nice to have help from the Virgin Islands. I couldn't help but overhear you say to your coach, this is the most tired you have been all year long. Yeah, we came out, and I think our defense really played great. And we had great intensity. We had a lot of pressure on the ball, and it made it easy for us inside guys to defend their inside guys. And uh, we were able to get our hands on a lot of balls in the first half, and we got pretty tired. Danny, it's a lot different feeling than you had down in Dallas two years ago. This is a much different feeling. You know, first of all, we were able to win the game, and I played much better this time around. Larry, it's October the 15th, and I'm going to tell you, you're not going to have these six fellas to play with. You're going to be 12 and 8 at some point in the season, but then you are also going to be in the national championship game. What would you have said to that? Oh, I can't believe it, Billy. Um, I was too dumb to play the right people. I guess that's obvious. And, you know, we've hung together and competed, and that's why we're here. Well, Larry Bird didn't do a bad job for you today. You said he will be a Larry Bird. He certainly played a great game, but I thought all the component parts did such a great job. Piper defense sensational and all the guys you brought off the bench and also the coach right here who's taking two teams to the championship game. Great Thanks, going. Larry. Thanks so much. All right, Larry, congratulations. Now let's go up to Jim Nance. Jim? All right, so Kansas has done it once again, 66 to 59, to advance on to Monday night's championship game. We have a lot in store for you. We'll tell you the special story of Tom. And we'll also interview Coach Bob Knight and Coach John Thompson as we continue here on CBS from Kansas City in just a moment.